Okay, guys, in this particular tutorial, we are going to use something that's called a Boolean operation to subtract one object from another object. However, we're going to be using folders, which is a, a feature that came out in one of the more recent versions of ZBrush. But to get started, I've been working on this other project, so let's go to the Simple Brush, click Switch, and then do a Command N or a Control N, which will clear the stage. Now, if I go over to the Simple Brush, I can choose something like the Sphere 3D. Oh, no, wrong one. Ring 3D. And then click and drag to place that on the stage. Immediately press the T key and then go over here to the Tool Palette. And I need to make that a Poly Mesh 3D. Now, we could go in and adjust this mesh to make it uh, smoother. But let's go ahead and just make Poly Mesh 3D and then we'll divide it to smooth it out. Now the first step here is to get a ring on the stage and then we'll be subtracting a cylinder from it. One of the things I see going on though is that this is not very smooth. The easiest way to deal with that is to go over here to the geometry palette and we'll divide a couple times to make it smooth. So I'll just divide once and observe. It looks fairly smooth, but let's divide again. And that's actually a pretty smooth resolution at about 33,000 points. Let's go ahead and delete the lower subdivisions because we don't need them. But that gives us a nice low resolution ring that looks pretty smooth. Now we go back to the subtool palette and from there we need to append a cylinder. So let's append a cylinder 3D to the project and now you can see that we have a ring and a cylinder. If you want to be good about it, you could click on the ring and rename that ring. And then the cylinder could be the core. Now the other thing is that this cylinder needs to be reduced in size and then also it needs to be smoothed as well. So let's switch to the move mode and that gives us the gizmo 3D. And then we can use this yellow box in the middle to click and drag and decrease the size. Now the other thing I can see here is that I want to stretch this ring. So I'll switch back to the ring and then use this rectangle on the Y axis just to stretch that out just a little bit. And that looks pretty good. If we wanted to hollow out this band, we would do it in a different step. But uh, for now, we're just going to cut a core right through the middle. Now you can switch back to your core and then decrease its size until you get it just how you'd like it. And I usually look for it to go kind of up to the top and then level out. Now, the other thing is that this core is not very smooth. So when we subtract it, you would actually see these facets on the inside of our ring. To smooth that out, we go back to the geometry palette and we'll divide a couple times just until it's visibly smooth. And for me, I usually go up to about 32,000 points. And I think that's fine for this project as well. We'll then delete the lower subdivisions because we don't need them. Now let's go back to the subtool palette. When we go to the subtool palette, we now need to put these into a folder. In my previous videos, what I've done is I've converted the ring into a DynaMesh object. And when I do that, then you could subtract. And that's kind of the historical way to do, I guess, a, a Boolean operation. But let's go ahead and click the ring and put it into a new folder down here by clicking new folder. And let's just call it ring or wideband. There we go. And then we need to move the core into the folder. So we'll click and drag and move the core beneath the ring. But what you're looking for is this hierarchy. So you'll have a folder. There's a line that comes down from it that has both of these items. Now the core needs to be beneath the ring. So we just make sure it's underneath. If it's not, you can just pick it up and move it. But once we get it in the right position, we need to click this little third icon here, which is a moon. And I had live Boolean turned on, but uh, so the core or the uh, the cylinder 3D has the subtraction icon and the other one has, I like to call it the MasterCard, comp <laughs> I guess, uh, icon. Now, if you wanted to preview this with both of these visible, go to the live Boolean button over here and you can see that that's what it's going to look like when we're done. So I'll turn live Boolean off. I'll go up here to the top where the folder is and look for the gear. Click on the gear and look for Boolean folder. When you click on that, it'll take a second, but it creates this umesh underscore ring that's underneath at the bottom. And it also turned the visibility off of the other two items. Click on the ring and there you can see here's your ring.
The other nice thing about this is it has fairly low resolution. So it's a 27,000, um, I guess, polygon or, or active points object. If you turn on your poly frame down here, you can see that it's a reasonable mesh, but it's a good base to start from. Another interesting thing that happened is that it created two poly groups. So the inside of the ring can be separated from the outside of the ring, which is something we'll tackle in other tutorials. So turn the poly frame off and there we have a ring. Now to save this, if you wanted to do this, uh, save it to, um, let's say a folder where it could be reused, you just go up to the tool palette and click save as, and then I might put it out here on my desktop just for grins. Or if you wanted to put it into the projects folder in ZBrush, you can go to your ZBrush folder and then look for your Z projects folder. There it is. And you'll have one that's already marked jewelry. And then you can choose the jewelry folder. And then let's just call this wide ring. Hit return. And now anytime you turn on your light box over here, you'll see under the project tab, and then in your jewelry folder that your ring is now appearing. It's wide ring. So that's how you can make a very simple ring using the folders and Boolean operations within ZBrush. And that's also, again, using it without Dynamesh. We'll explore that further, but that's just a simple tutorial for jewelry.